Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We've got one more program on the schedule before we get out of here. It's going to be tough to concentrate with uh, a bar right next door, particularly an open bar, but we're going to do our best. So this is going to be a conversation with Detroit City Council members. So I'm going to ask uh, various members, since we have limited space on the stage, I'm going to ask for various members to join me on the stage. So uh, this is, I'm asking the members now to bring your patience up on the stage because it's going to be a little noisy. So without further ado, it's my great privilege and honor to bring to you the Detroit City Council, starting with Council Member Gabriela Santiago Romero. Hi, hi. Thank Happy you. New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you. Council member Letitia Johnson. And council member Fred Durhall. So we, I understand that uh, we stand between you and the bar. So we're going to be brief, but we want this to be uh, enjoyable for you. So if you, the best that we can get some, uh, some, some quiet time, that'd be great. Okay, we're going to use our outside voice. So I'm going to start um, and ask some, a basic question of each of you. And that is, why don't you introduce yourself, your district, the committees that you are on, and then uh, I want to follow that up with what drove you to service. How did you get to where you're at? Councilwoman. Okay, thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having us. Happy to be here. Um, I will use my outside voice as much as I can um, and understand that everyone's chatting and drinking and eating. Um, but my name is Gabriela Santiago Romero. I am the Detroit City Council member for District 6, Neighborhoods Encompass, Southwest Detroit, Corktown, Downtown, Brush Park, 4217, uh, Woodbridge, so many beautiful neighborhoods. The committees that I sit on, I sit on our Budget, Finance, and Audit Committee, and I also chair our Public Health and Safety Committee. And what drove me to do this work is the fact that I grew up here in poverty. Um, I grew up here as an immigrant. I grew up to a single mother who struggled the way that many families in our community struggled. So I saw that fight. I saw those struggles. And I also saw what it looked like to have resources and support the way that Detroit does um, and how that really allowed me and my family to live with dignity. So happy to be here. And that is why I ran. Happy to answer any more questions. I'll turn it over to Member Johnson. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much. I'm Letitia Johnson. I serve as the District 4 City Council Representative on the far east side of Detroit. Oh. East side? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I co-chair the Equitable Development Task Force and also sit on the Minority Business, Small Business Task Force uh, with City Council. What drove me to run for city council? To, to want to serve. What drove me to want to serve was a continuation of service. Um, so I served for 15 years in the community advocating on behalf of uh, several communities on the Far East Side, Morningside, East English Village, and Cornerstone Village, uh, and just wanted to continue to make sure that the community's voice was represented and being heard um, at the council table. Very good. Thank you. Councilmember Durhall. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Councilmember Durhall from the west side <laughs> of the city of Detroit. It's not the same. It's a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, uh, I represent District 7, uh, which encompasses the west side of Detroit uh, on the borders of Dearborn and Redford uh, as well. Uh, and so I serve as the chair of the Budget, Finance, and Audit Subcommittee. Uh, I also serve as the vice chair of the Planning and Economic Development Subcommittee. 
the chair of the gun violence, co-chair of gun violence task force, chair of the disability task force, and chair of the returning citizens task force. Uh, and what has driven me to service? Uh, blood, right. <laughs> pretty right. much. Uh, got an early start. Uh, and we're continuing that legacy, pushing forward to help all of our residents and help our people. And so thank you for having us today, and I'm grateful to be here. Grateful. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Councilwoman, I, I did want to follow up with uh, conversations around role models. Uh, how did you, who, who did you as aspire to or be with that, that motivates you and drove you along your climb? That's a beautiful and wonderful question. So as far as role models, uh, I truly wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the role models in my life. Um, so again, I'm an immigrant. I was born in Mexico. I was raised in Southwest Detroit. I've been there since I was two years old. Um, and growing up at that time, um, the only people that I saw in office were men. And quite frankly, the first time that I was told to run for office, I was in middle school. I was talking about climate change, and I was talking about creating cars that breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen like trees. My teacher said, become a, become a scientist to be able to create those cars. I said, no, I hate math. I don't do math. I'm not going to be a scientist. She said, become a politician to create the policies. I said, I thought you had to be an old white man to be a politician. Because that is literally all that I saw wow. was old white men in right. politics. I didn't know it was even an option for me. So thankfully, Rashida Tlaib, Stephanie Chang, Raquel Casinada Lopez, all incredible women of color who come from immigrant families for working, working class, working poor families, were in these leadership positions, and all three of them told me to run for office. So I am incredibly grateful for them um, and their encouragement and their fights and for investing in me to be able to do this work. Very good. Thank you. Councilman Johnson. Uh, so role models for me. So um, I grew up on the far east side of Detroit. I actually grew up in extreme poverty. Uh, I am one of eight children. I was, I'm number five. I was the first in my family to graduate from college. Uh, and that was essentially having someone see something in me uh, and really help to put me on a pathway for success. Uh, so I graduated from Kettering High School on I-94 in Van Dyke, and it was my chemistry teacher at Kettering, Miss Hammy, uh, who enrolled me in a program called the Program in Scholarly Research at the University of Michigan. And every summer throughout high school, I stayed on campus at the university, uh, did different science projects, and my initial major was chemical engineering. Uh, I was accepted to the College of Engineering at the University of Michigan, uh, spent two years there, and then said, you know what, this isn't me. I had no interest in working in a laboratory all day, every day, and um, stepped back and had to figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, ultimately, ended up getting my finance degree at the University of Michigan in Dearborn, uh, and still saw myself on Wall Street in New York. I wanted to be a financial analyst. And um, I think for me, what helped me to get into this position was really just the service in the community. Um, I had retired as a lot of people, I tell a lot of people from the uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau working to promote Metro Detroit and just decided to take a break took a break and got heavily involved in community. And you know Bill Barlidge, who I served alongside for almost a decade, who really was an inspiration in the community as well. And um, that culminates essentially my entire life up until this point and the reason that I'm here. Very good, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Council well, Linder. Well, well, let me see, role models, hmm. Um, <laughs> Uh, obviously, some guy that shares the same name that I have uh, and getting involved early, uh, being around, obviously, my father who served as a state representative, uh, worked as an assistant to Mayor Coleman Young, and just being a kid here in the city, uh, around this environment of government here in the city of Detroit, having the honor to be around Mayor Coleman Young and Clyde Cleveland and some of the greats that came uh, before us. A couple of mentors in this room, uh, Tommy Stallworth. Uh, and the entire Stallworth family. And so uh, being exposed to those great leaders from the city of Detroit at a very young age pushed and propelled me uh, into public service even more. Uh, and so served in the state legislature two terms, as the, one term as the assistant democratic leader over appropriations in the second term. And here we are now on the council. And so uh, that is pretty much the story of how I got into it uh, and the legacy uh, of great Detroiters. Great, thank you. 
So this is really meant to be an introduction for these members to this audience. This is relatively a new environment. So we just really wanted you to get to know the members better. But I'd be remiss if I didn't ask one policy question. And so that one policy question would be, if you can wave a magic wand and get one thing done in 2023, what would it be? Great question. I think magic wand getting one thing done this year, it would be establishing the Office of Violence Prevention. This is something that I think a lot of my colleagues are interested in having their hand on, ensuring that we are meeting all of the needs when it comes to the uncertainty, the violence, um, the safety that our, that our neighborhoods um, and in the city need. So as a social worker, as a community organizer, I am really, really encouraged. Um, I have been traveling to DC with our deputy mayor, um, and I'm excited, and I really hope that we can make this, we can make this happen this year. So it's really establishing that office. That's beautiful. Council Member Johnson. So I will say, um, just ensuring that we have access to affordable home ownership for Detroit residents. Um, just thinking about the way that I grew up and, and realizing how home ownership is becoming unattainable for so many Detroiters, but um, making sure that we can actually have that be a reality for more Detroit residents. Very good. Thank you. And I would say just continuing the progress uh, that we're on. Uh, if you look back 10 years uh, and you see where Detroit is now and where we're going, to keep that progress going is so vital and so important. And whether that's neighborhood stabilization, whether that's public safety, whether that's jobs and economic development, all of that is wrapped into keeping that progress going and keeping that momentum going. We'll have some great opportunities. We've got a different legislature now, uh, so we'll be able to tackle some issues like affordable housing, be able to tackle, tackle some issues uh, such as job development and creation, uh, and continue to build our city so our city can grow and be the best that it can possibly be. It, it, it is a new day, right? Uh, I can't remember in my history where we had a democratically, a, a nonpartisan city council, a democratic mayor, a democratic governor, and a democratic president all at the same time. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So your colleagues got a, a, a little a preview of the questions to come. So I'm going to try to catch them off guard. Next on the panel. <laughs> there you go. Well, well, let me. <laughs> Council Member Coleman Young, the second. Ms. Calloway, how are you? How are you? Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Same to you. I think. Council Member Angela Calloway. And. Last but not least, uh-oh, I don't see him out there. Oh, there he is. Oh, Council member pro tem, James Tate. She was in the next round. We're doing now. I think that's it. Yeah. Who else is here? So here's the. So they got a preview, so uh, I I'm sure they're ready. So again, uh, similar questions, starting with Council Member Young. Walk us through your journey. First, uh, tell us who you are, the district you represent, the committees you're on, and then we'll go from there. Well, first of all, can we give a round of applause to the host with the Moses? Come on, everybody, give a round of applause. We got limited time. Out here looking like new money. <laughs> My man. Uh, listen, first of all, um, I'm Coleman Alexander Young II. Uh, I'm city council at large. Thank you. Thank you. Number one means I got the most votes. Thank you. Appreciate your support. Uh, secondly, um, the committees that I'm on, is I'm the chair of Neighborhood Community Stand uh, Services Committee. I'm also on the Budget Committee as well. Um, I also am part of the Skill Trades Task Force, and I'm also part of the New Technology Task Force. And uh, so these are some of the committees that I'm on. And the reason why I got into public service was a couple of reasons. One, my father is Coleman Young II, the Coleman Young Sears, excuse me, first African-American mayor and longest serving. 
And so when you come from a legacy like that, who was a Tuskegee Airman who actually led, thank you, appreciate that. Thank you, appreciate that. Who actually led a, the Freedman Field Mutiny uh, because they wouldn't allow officers of color to be able to uh, go into the officers club. Uh, and also the legacy that he had through diversity, the city still exists today. That's a legacy that you want to be a part of. And that's really what inspired me because he taught me that power is only important as an instrument to serve the powerless with. And so I'm honored, I'm thankful, I'm humbled to be in this position, to be in the building that carries that legacy and be embraced that energy and spirit every day is one of the most tremendous honors of my life. I'm appreciative of it and thankful of it. Thank you, Council Member. Councilwoman Calloway. Uh, good afternoon and thank you. Thank you. Um, happy New Year. I'm praying that each and every one of you will have a safe New Year and a blessed New Year. I'm Angela Whitfield Calloway and I am the council person for District 2, the most beautiful, <laughs> vibrant, lean and green district in all of the city of Detroit. I represent zip code 48221, 48235, 48230, 203, 4 8238 and 48227, some sections of it. And I got into this job um, because I was frustrated. I'm just going to be real honest with you. I'm a lifelong Detroiter, and I was not pleased with the work that was coming from the city council. I just wasn't. And um, my three daughters were arrested in 2020 for simply exercising their right to protest and to march peaceably after the murder of George Floyd. I didn't like the fact that the city council voted to sue those peaceful protesters, including my three daughters. And I contacted my council person at the time and I explained to him why I thought that he should not vote in the manner in which I thought he was going to vote. And from some frustration, um, not believing that my voice was being heard, I ran for this office. And um, I'm excited about the work that we're doing. I'm excited about the things that are happening in my district. Uh, we have some issues in my district. You know, of course, I represent Sherwood Forest, University of Detroit, Bagley, Green Acres, some of the most beautiful areas in the city. But I also represent a section of 48203 on the other side of Woodward. I call it the east side of Woodward, the forgotten side of Woodward, which is near the Amazon warehouse. We talk about, and I'll be hearing a lot about it today, downtown and midtown. I like to close the gap. I want us to be able to talk about what's happening in the neighborhoods. How about starting in my neighborhood? I want to see a shovel in the ground in 48203. I want to be able to know that the people who work in the Amazon can walk to their home, can have a daycare center near the Amazon warehouse, which is the largest warehouse in this country. But there's no housing in 48203. I want to see shovels in the ground in my district. Love downtown. Love what I see going on in downtown and midtown. But in my opinion, there are two Detroits. We say that they're not, but they are. There are two Detroits, downtown slash midtown, and then the neighborhoods. I like to see what's happening in downtown and midtown happen in my neck of the woods. I'm a Cooley High School graduate, West Side, <laughs> Spelman College grad, HBCBU. Yes, HCBU, and I'm excited about serving. And I'm going to continue to be the voice of those who believe their voices have not been heard. Again, God bless you, and thank you for this opportunity to serve. Thank you, Councilwoman. It's, thank you. It's not lost on me that one of the newest, freshest faces on council sitting next to one of the wisest, longest-serving council that's members what, That's we what have. we call it, wise. <laughs> wise. Not old. <laughs> Pro, most distinct. Pro-tempt. Pro receive, receive. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Detroit City Council President Pro-Tem James Tate. 
uh, and has been mentioned, I am the longest serving member of Detroit City Council. I'm in my fourth term now, uh, and I'm very thankful for the Detroiters who uh, decided that I was someone who they believed in and uh, allowed me to sit in this seat. Uh, I've done my best uh, up to this point, but I believe that there's still a whole lot more that still needs to be done. And I, 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 let me put a pin in it. I was not one of the council members who voted to support <laughs> suing the protesters. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> um, but I'm, 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 I'm really enjoying this, uh, this new energy that we have with this particular council. Um, it's, 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 it's refreshing. Uh, I will also say that the challenges that we have in the city today are challenges that we've seen for a number of years, but we've never been in a position financially where we can address them like we can today. And if we do not take advantage of this opportunity that we have, uh, we will have squandered all of this, this, this potential, as we continue to call it. No matter who's sitting in the seat, it will be all of our responsibility if we do not take advantage of this moment in time. Um, I, I've done everything of significance in my life in this city. Don't plan on leaving any time soon. Uh, so um, I think that was the question. What yeah. Question? So right, pro tem, why you have the mic? Uh, what? Tell me, what inspires you to oh, serve you and so to what, continue to serve? Yeah, what inspired me to uh, to serve was, I mean, at the time. So I I, I ran in two thousand and nine, and in two thousand and nine, as we know, there were scandals everywhere. Unfortunately, in the city. Uh, financially uh, was, was twirling down a drain, it felt like. Um, so it was a sense of duty. And this is not to put any blame on any one or group of individuals. It was just the climate at the time. And it was a, a sense of duty for me. I, I know that I was not going to leave the city of Detroit anytime soon. My family is here. And it was imperative that uh, instead of me on the outside looking in, complaining, I take a role, an active role, in being a part of the change that, as we always say, we want to see. Thank you. Councilwoman, can I presume your response about your daughters being arrested inspired you, or is there more to? Uh, well, you know, first of all, I didn't tell you um, about the committees that I serve on, and that was one of your questions. I chaired the Rules Committee. I serve alongside these two um, gentlemen on the Neighborhoods and Community Services Committee, and I'm the HITS co-chair. And I also serve on the Internal Operations Committee. Um, and what was your question after that? Uh, that I presume that when we talk, you talked earlier about your daughters, that inspired you to run. That was the motivating factor by you jumping in to serve? Yeah, and then also, um, that was one of the motivating factors. But just believing that perhaps I could make a difference in serving my district where I live, in Green Acres. Um, and I believe I am making a, dis a difference. Um, I believe that I'm a voice for a group of people who believe that their voices haven't been heard. I am that voice for District 2, and I know that I am. Um, I make some very difficult votes, not always popular, but I make them anyway. After I've prayed about it, I make the vote. They're not always popular, but when I vote, I vote on the side of the people 100% of the time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Young, I, I'm, I'm not even going to insult you about your inspiration uh, to run. <laughs> so, uh, you can address that, but I'm also going to ask you, the three of you, again, the magic wand question. You have magic wand that can grant one wish. What would you like to see done this year at the table? One wish? Man, that's like ask me the name of your favorite kid. Come on, man. It's not fair. It's not right. <laughs> um... If I, could, if, 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 if I had a magic wand and if I could do one thing, what I would like to do is I would really like to get a handle on the crime and violence in the city. I think that even though the violent crime has gone down by 11% according to analysis, I still think we've lost too many lives. And I think the issue about crime is that it touches on a lot of things. You know, you could talk about housing, which is a major issue. You could talk about mental health services to prevent it. You could also talk about wages which I think really need to go. I think unemployment being under 7% for the first time in 20 years is a good thing. And I want to thank everybody in the room for participating in that because small businesses and job creators are the ones that are doing that and having 10,000 jobs available. But I definitely think that's the one issue that I would want to do is really make sure that we could do a better job 
of having a holistic approach towards dealing with the issue of crime, not just in terms of policing, where we carry a stick, but also where we have more carrots as well. Because like my father said, there's no problem in this city that a good paying job can't fix. And so I think it's important that we reach out to our business community here in order to address that. And I think, and I think also making it easier for small businesses to really be able to start up in the city of Detroit is a much necessary thing that we need to do. And Thank so I you. think these are some of the things I want to do to resolve the crime issue. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilwoman. Okay. So if I had a magic wand, I would make the city of Detroit one Detroit. What's happening in downtown and midtown, I really would like to see it happen in the neighborhoods where people, most of the people live. Most of the people do not live where we're developing. We're neglecting the areas where the people live. So if I had a magic wand, I would make Detroit one Detroit. And affordable housing, really affordable for those who make under 25,000. I would like to see the black women, single women who have children, who I saw cleaning some of the some of the developments downtown. They were cleaning the windows. I would like to see them be able to afford to live in those buildings where they are cleaning. If I had a magic wand, I'd make that happen. Thank you. Pro Tem. Yeah, my magic wand would be similar to uh, Member Young's. I mean, this issue of violence in the city of Detroit has been pervasive uh, every since I was a little young boy, uh, and it hasn't gotten better. Uh, and whether we look at the numbers or not, the, the sheer uh, audacity of some of these individuals who are committing these crimes, it's just mind blowing. And, and I, I don't believe it's just because folks wake up in the morning and say, I wanna, I wanna commit a crime today. Some of this are mental health challenges, uh, and it's not necessarily one of uh, these challenges that have names, so to speak, that everyone knows about. Uh, Sometimes it's ACEs, these adverse childhood experiences that create these uh, that manifest inside of this this individual, and it then explodes into this uh, violence that we see. Uh, folks don't know how to necessarily uh, address the, the the issues, the conflict that they have. So, if I had a magic wand, it would be uh, in that area. Uh, I'm working now with the administration. We have not put all of the details together, but. Uh, I'm working to get free health, mental health therapy for residents in the city of Detroit because we want to address these issues before it becomes a crisis for an individual. And it has to be affordable. We talk now, thankfully, we're lifting the veil uh, of the stigma that uh, mental health, uh, excuse me, health therapy and mental health as a whole uh, has for so many people, um, but it's still not accessible. It costs. There's a price to be paid. And so we want to make sure, uh, for me, I want to make sure that is accessible uh, as we lift up the importance of taking care of yourself mentally and, and preparing yourself for those challenges that we all have come before us. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Please give it up to Member Young, Member Calloway, and Pro Tem Tate.